All right, thanks, Derek. The White House is trying to piece together a stunning series of events in Russia over the weekend and the impact it could have on the war in Ukraine. The country's president managed to avert an armed mutiny, but he still has some major challenges ahead. Let's talk to Fox's Doug Luzader, live from Washington, D.C. Boy, Doug, what a weekend. Dina, that it was. Uh, some pretty surprising developments there in Russia. Obviously, we know that attention has been growing there because of the war in Ukraine. But what happened over the weekend was unexpected and for Russian President Vladimir Putin, unprecedented. The Russian city at the center of an armed revolt over the weekend is quiet now. But Russian President Vladimir Putin has just seen the biggest challenge to his authority since he first took charge more than two decades ago. A mutiny by mercenaries from the Wagner Group had its sights set on Moscow before the group's leader backed down, agreeing to leave for Belarus. President Biden did not take questions as he returned to Washington from a weekend at Camp David, but he did speak with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky yesterday. As Zelensky later pointed to what he called degradation in Russia. Now, Russia did provide video of its embattled defense minister touring operations in Ukraine, but this may have weakened his standing too. The Wagner Group has been a brutal but key player in Putin's stalled effort to take over Ukraine. The Biden administration says there's no indication that Russia's nuclear posture has changed, but a weakened Putin could lash out in unpredictable ways. This raises profound questions. It, it shows real cracks. We can't speculate or know exactly where that's going to go. We do know that Putin has a lot more to answer for in the, in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, the impact this has on Putin is just not clear at this point. Putin had given the head of Wagner a lot of leeway uh, and a lot of latitude to criticize the Russian uh, defense ministry, but this was obviously taking things a bit too far, marching on Moscow. Dina. And Doug, do we know what made him pull back from the coup and then take off for Belarus? Well, it wasn't clear what the end game was going to be. I mean, could Wagner really, really stand up against the, the, the full force of the Russian military? Were this to become some kind of a coup or some attempted, attempted regime change? So ultimately, it may be a bit of flash and anger, uh, and there was, this was a negotiated settlement, but uh, it's not clear what the end game here is going to be. And is it, do we know how this has played out on, with Russians as far as what they know about what happened, how it's being communicated to them uh, through their government-dictated media sources? Well, this has always been a challenge uh, for, you know, the, the, the true cost of the war, for instance, and the degree to which that's really known in Russia. Obviously, with the death toll reaching the kind of numbers that they're seeing there, people are learning uh, just how bad the war is going there uh, for Russia and for Ukraine, for that matter. Um, but as far as this is concerned, you know, people saw this. I mean, people saw the reinforcements brought in, uh, the kind of blockades that they were using, the barricades that were set up around Moscow in anticipation of this possible attack. Hmm. All right, we'll see where this goes from here. Doug, thank you. Thank you. Doug Luzader, live from Washington.